praise the Lord. Well, 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 well. One more day again. We are stepping into evidence right now. And I thank God for all those who partake in these sessions night after night, day after day. Well, this is a week again. We are, we are now in the month of, uh, of March. We are way ahead uh, of the, the season and time. And war is taking place right now. War. We have the evidence now that world war, we are heading to a world war. We have the evidence. Because this country and them tripping right now. Everybody right now playing the powerhouse, the power struggle. Every country right now have nuclear and they don't care about us no more. And that is the evidence of Bible. It's being fulfilled right before our face. And if you don't know that, who know, know. Who don't know, don't know. But Bible are being manifest in, before our face. All that we read all these years, we read scriptures and all these things. It is now coming to pass right before our eyes. We have the evidence. Everything Jesus prophesied and Jesus said, rumors of wars and wars and everything coming, it is now being manifest before our eyes. Who know, know. Who don't know, don't know. I know because why? Bible have been unfold. And I'll be sharing this with you right now about evidence, you know. Ah, evidence, 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 supernatural evidence. And when you are talking about super, supernatural evidence, you are talking here miracle. God is a God of miracle. And the most, the most effective evidence that one can believe exists or can take place is, is uh, miracles. The God I serve, or the God we serve, who on my side, who on our side, the God we serve still do miracles. You know, he's a miracle working God. And we, many of us need evidence that God can still do what he promises. I say this morning, you know, and you know, and, and back, back then when Jesus departed, you know, the disciples and all those who are connected to Jesus Christ, great sign and wonders begin, begin to take, take place. And right now, as the war is going ahead, the vaccine gone, the, the pandemic gone, and the mask gone, and things are going right now. And people did not know that a miracle took place. That God has now abolished all these vaccines and, and all these masks. And it's a miracle. God working a miracle on behalf of his children. Somebody prayed, you know. And, and, and in, the, in, the, in the early times, this guy Paul... Some people, some, some people don't like Paul. Paul was a, 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 an apostle or a disciple, never had the privilege to be in the presence of Jesus the Christ. Or Christ. He never met Jesus and walked as a disciple. But he had an encounter and he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, this guy Paul. And he was converted by blindness. You know, he, he was blind for a couple, couple of days. That is the evidence of conversion. When God has done something to you and you has, he has delivered you, you have the proof. This guy, Paul, he was killing people before, but now he came and he encountered Jesus Christ, fell off his horse, got blind, someone laid hand upon him, and he began to see. So he had the evidence that miracle is possible and God still doing miracle today through those who believe in Christ I'm a walking miracle I don't know about you but I'm a walking miracle and God does miracle for me with me every day every day I see God do a miracle because why I have the evidence you know, and I know I have a supernatural God. And I know God by his ways and what he does. How he deliver me, how he help me. When I fall in a trap or make a mistake or go wrong, I have the evidence that God is there to keep me. When I'm going right, he pushes me. And this guy Paul, he, he, he get converted now and he start to walk in a supernatural way 
at he never did before. And many of us right now who are in Christ, we are, will encounter in our life, some people early, some people late in their life, that God is a God that keeps his promises. If God is going to bless you, he will bless you. Help you, he will help you. And Paul began to do some crazy stuff. And God began to walk through the hand of Paul. And Paul was going around now, confessing that Christ is Lord, and talking about the resurrection, and talking about holiness, and Holy Spirit, and the power of God. And Paul began to baptize people. He was properly converted. Paul had real conversion. The best person to be is a person who has a qualified conversion. When you have a qualified conversion, you have evidence that God has done it to you. When you show that God done it to you, you there will be an evidence in you that you have a testimony right to your life. And in Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 19, uh, verse, uh, verse 11, it says here, uh, And God wrought special miracles. God. God did. He operated. What wrought means he operated. He manifests special miracles by the hand of Paul. Would you like God to really move to you in special ways? I, I, I thank God that he nominated me to do things for him in special ways. I know when I when I do something, I know God did it. All my cars, my God did it. Because I, I have evidence whatever I'm going through, what I'm doing is God did it. That's my slogan as a man of God. God did it. I always give God all the praise before it happened. I give God praise. But Paul and God wrought, God did tremendous special miracle by the hand of Paul. At verse 12, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or apron cloth, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Okay, so that is what God was doing to this man, Paul, because he, he had the evidence that God was manifesting to him. And I am praying right now as we go through, as we come out of this pandemic. And we're going out to an endemic. And now we're going out to some kind, of, some kind of dick. But I know right now God can use you in a tremendous way to work miracles. Verse 12 says, so that from his body, from Paul's body, were brought under the sick. You know, handkerchiefs or apron and diseases depart from them. And the evil spirit went out of them. We're talking here about supernatural evidence. The evil spirit went out. The evil spirit, that means the evil spirit had people mind trapped. When the evil spirit upon you, it's not in you, in your body. It's your mind, your thoughts, your will, your belief. Evil spirit only can take you down by what you believe. If you believe that Christ is Lord, no evil spirit can take you down. Verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, who had great, 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 great um, earthly powers, they took upon them to call over them which had evil spirit, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, these vagabond Jews, you know, a vagabond Jew is a Jew was never experience never experienced the hand of God they always was copycats they like a try what they see like many of us right now we trying what we heard what we see but you have to do what you experience when you are experienced now you have evidence these guys there was exorcist their guys are cast out the devil by devil use the devil to heal the devil Sick, they, you know, they, they were vagabond, they, they were reckless. They never concerned concern God and they never consult God. Can you live a life and do things and never consult God? Never concern God? Well, I thank God, I concern God and I thank God, I consult God. 
when you consult God, he gives you evidence that he's in it. And whatever you do, he do it. Then certain of the vagabond Jews exhausted, they took upon themselves to call them which had evil spirit the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjourn you, we command you by Jesus whom Paul preached. Jesus whom Paul preached. Whom Paul preached. Not whom they preach. They know the Jesus in Paul, but they never experienced Jesus for themselves. There was no evidence. When you experience Christ for yourself, whether what you are going to, you have evidence. And you are connected, you are connected with supernatural. And who know, know, who don't know, don't know. But at that time, you will manifest things. And when you manifest things, you will manifest things only in Jesus' name. Not the Jesus of Carl Mead. Oh, never go after my Jesus. Get him for yourself. You need evidence. Then, vagabond Jews. Exorcists, they took upon to call over which had evidence, which had evil spirits. And they say, in Jesus' name, come out in whom Paul preached. Verse 14. And there were seven sons of Sceva. Seven sons. There were seven sons of one Sceva. Sceva was a, 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 a priest. He was a, a high priest in the demonic system was a Jew he was a chief priest and he was there under the trying necromancy and the evil spirit now begin to talk to these guys and them ha <laughs> ha we talking here there comes a time in life you will be confronted now with what you know about God and what you don't know about God if you don't know about God don't go and Play, you know. Who know, know. Who don't know, don't know. I don't fear no devil, no evil. Because I am saying this. I will not say the God I did not know. I know God say the name of Jesus. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. Which did so. Was 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Hey, hey guys. Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> you see, when you confronting something or somebody on behalf of God, you must be able to have evidence in your life that you have been with Jesus Christ, that you have the Holy Spirit. You are now a conduit and you are a child of God and you now you represent a kingdom that they cannot see. That is what God is doing right now in the supernatural. You know, do not go out there and profess you know God and you don't have an experience. If you have an experience, it's because you have evidence. If God do it the first time, he can do it again. God will do it again and again. The amount of things I have seen God did in my 38 years of ministry, I have evidence. If God say he will do it, he will do it. And the evil spirit in the mind of those people answered and said, Jesus I know. So the evil spirit had evidence that Jesus have supernatural power. Paul I know. Paul was representing Jesus Christ because he had evidence that Jesus Christ is his Lord. But who are you? Do you know my do you know Christ? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leap on them. <laughs> leap on them. Leap overcome overcame them and prevail against them. So that they flee out of the house naked and wounded. Hey, anytime you do not walk with God right. Enemy will come and have you naked and wounded. I have seen many people right now who have come around me and want the gift that God gave me. You cannot get what God gives to me. Get your gift for yourself. But to get God's gift for yourself, you need to have evidence and a testimony that God did it. 
who know, know. Who don't know, don't know. If you don't know, don't go and play, you know. If you don't know about the power of God, don't mess with fire. Don't, don't go in the heat. You will get burned. If you don't know, don't know. And the man in whom the instrument was, one man, leap on them. That means one man and overcome them and prevail against them so that they flee out of that house naked and wounded. I thank God since I came to Christ, I thank God he never allowed me to be wounded. I pray, I hope right now, if you have the evidence, God will never allow the enemy to wound you. You will stand strong. You will always correct yourself. If you know God, you will go back to God. You will always stay with God. No matter what you're doing, stay in God's presence. If you don't know, don't mess with demons. Don't mess with fire. And the man in whom the illness was, leap on them. I thank God today. And I am praying in my spirit right now. Those who are here right now, know what you're doing. Because demons still leaping. Demon can still leap. It's a thought. Demon comes through expression. Demons come through suggestion. It comes through familiar spirit. It comes through false revelation. It comes through lies. Demons can come to any door that God did not open. Once you open a door, demons come at you. It is called supernatural evidence. When you have that, you will find them coming in. You say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Demon talking there. But who is you? Who is you? So don't go around there and play your no. And verse 17 says, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fall on them all, and the name of the Lord Christ was magnified. I, I thank God. I was telling my staff this morning, morning I have traveled this world. I've seen so much things. I see blind eyes open. I see deaf speak. I hear, you know, I hear dumb talk. I see demon cast out. I see all kind of things happening. Because I have the evidence that God will do what he say he can do. And you have to understand this kind of work. We're talking this week here, supernatural evidence. Some people are going through right now, a life and they feel right now, oh, are sinning, or oh, evil, or oh, are wicked. No, God is giving you evidence that he can deliver you. You want evidence. Some people right now, they lost the house, they lost the car, your breasts have cancer, you're sick right now, you're in bed lying down right now, you can't walk, but the enemy cannot touch your soul. It's better the enemy touch your soul, I mean touch your body, than touch your soul. Your soul is the evidence when you have that experience and testimony that God is faithful. He's a faithful God. He's a loving God. He can do great things. He can do the impossible. And I know that is the kind of God I have. And you must know these things. And this was known to all the Jews. Also who dwell in Ephesus. And fear fall on them all. Because why? The man Paul had evidence that he has met Jesus Christ, not in person, but through a supernatural encounter. He was blind. I thank God today that there are many ways you can meet God. I met God through an accident. I met God through in a bed lying down. I have evidence that God can heal me, that God can turn me around. He can forgive me. He can mend me. He can keep me strong. But I've got to know who know, know, who don't or don't know. If you don't know, don't mess with those who know. Hey, call me here. I'm coming again tonight again. Watch out again. Some good stuff this weekend coming here. Who know, know. Who don't know, don't know. Do you know? Watch now.
welcome again to Podium Podcast Network. I'm your host, Carl Mead, and today we are coming live into your, on your home, on your cell phone, your iPad, wherever you are. Praise God again. Welcome again to Podium Podcast Network. I'm your host, Carl Mead, and today we are coming live into your, on your home, on your cell phone, your iPad, wherever you are around the world, talking to you right now. And this is the talking here about pillars of truth. It's a table where truth comes from. And I thank God for tonight. I have a, a guest that's passing <coughs> by from Ghana. And he came yesterday, just passed by from anniversary. And he's just here to share with us. And you know, uh, we are now focusing on this month on God's kingdom. Because God's kingdom is what Christ brought for us. He did not brought the church. He brought God's kingdom to us. But the church is man-made and God's God kingdom is God-made. So again, stay in the dial. Don't turn around. Don't move around because some good stuff is coming away. Amen? I believe that God will give you some good insight into reality on tonight. I have a good friend of me, a good friend of mine. Gideon Akoto from Ghana. Gideon, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you? Uh, how how will you enjoy Trinidad so far? Uh, as usual, how Trinidad has always been a very wonderful place. For you? Yeah, for me. And I believe not only for me, but I believe all the visitors that come to this, this country yeah. really enjoy this place. Right, right, right. Well, you know, tonight we we having a, a good time. We was in a church yesterday, man. <coughs> ah, man, that was a good service, man. We thank God. You, know, you brought some good revelation for the church. Right. And I believe this is the kind of message the church want. True. And I believe any pastor who have a man like you around should open their doors. Because some things you see in that church yesterday, last time I was here, yeah. or last night, the pastor couldn't say it. So sometimes men of God need to open the doors for fresh flame and fresh fire. Right. You know, I thank God. But you know, I, I will be sharing here this month, in the month of July, on uh, God's kingdom. How do you look at God's kingdom? What do you, what, what, how do you see the church and God's kingdom? Well, praise God to all the listeners and the viewers all across the globe. Mm. And everywhere you are sitting, watching and glued to the station, uh, watching myself and Carl Mead talking mm. about the kingdom of God, mm. the relationship between the church and the kingdom of God. Mm number one what i would like to say for all the listeners is that understanding of the kingdom mm. is very important in other for those living in the kingdom to be effective yeah. you have to understand the kingdom you belong to right that every kingdom has rules right has principles have set of rules that governs the kingdom right so if you don't understand the the rules of the kingdom you cannot effectively enjoy the kingdom right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> go on man go on yeah and and therefore the kingdom of god as you quoted in john in matthew chapter 12 11 mm. verse number 12, 12 mm. when it says that since the day of john the baptist the kingdom of god suffered violence right and the violent take it by force. What that what that mean to you? When, because a lot of preachers think that script there. Yeah. And you know, and they, they make it look like you know, like it's a kind of war going on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get it right, you know. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah, on, yeah. On, I, on I would like to say something here, Carl. You know, like I like I say from my my opening statement, understanding of everything is very crucial in mm. order for you to be effective in that either in the kingdom or in the business or in marriage or in relationship or mm. any career yeah. understanding of the fundamental principles of the foundation that govern that institution yeah. is very important <laughs> now what do we have to understand about this scripture since the day of john the baptist the kingdom of god suffered violent it has nothing to do with warfare right Right. It, is, it is not about warfare. Mm. Like myself, I have heard many people talking about, many pastors, bishop, apostle, prophet, talking about taking, taking things by force, by that scripture. It has nothing to do with that. This is what it has to do with from the perspective of understanding is that John the Baptist mm. was sent as a man to prepare the way for the arrival of Christ. The sent one. The sent one.
<laughs> like, like, like you always, you know, say, you know. The sent one, the sent one. The sent one. Now, the sent one, John the Baptist, was sent to prepare the mm. way for the arrival of Christ. Right. And John make it for us to understand that he is not himself, not a Christ, mm. but he was just sent to prepare the way for the arrival of the main person. Mm. Now, Jesus also, when he arrived, already started building on the work that John the Baptist came to do right. about the preparation of the way for his arrival. Right. John preached the baptism of repentance. And as a result of the people from Judah, you know, the all the neighboring system, they all came and followed John the Baptist. And John baptized a lot of people and a lot of people were following John the Baptist. Right. And therefore, when Christ came, mm. Christ began to build on what John the Baptist has already started. Why, why, you, why, you, why are you thinking that, that John the Baptist come? Because, I mean, Christ could have come without, without being a foreigner right but why did why why did god send john before but I mean, christ, is, christ is god right yeah he's oh, god so why why does not come prepare a way for, for god why did you see now the, the, now, now we have to come back to this understanding the entering way of any spirit from heaven to earth realm yeah. is through the womb of a woman right now, there is no spirit being that will be legal to operate on earth without coming through the womb of a woman. Huh. Now, God himself realized that that is the legal entering point to the planet earth. That any other spirit that comes without coming through the womb of a woman to wrap around with flesh, you are illegal operating on earth. Right. So God himself, through Jesus Christ, have to also subject himself through the coming through the womb of a woman so that we can have a flesh around god to wrap him around my, 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 my. so that he can also come through the same channel yeah. everybody's coming through uh, okay so that he become legal person operating on earth now if we do understand that then you can understand the reason why john the baptist have to be sent to prepare the way for christ hmm. just as any leader any prince any governor any president moving into another country mm. they don't go just like that by getting up to go mm. they have to send somebody ahead the four runners right. ahead of them yeah, prepare to prepare the way, the way right. for the arrival of the president or the king or mm. the queen mm. so that everybody will be ready to receive what is coming so somebody always have to prepare the way for the arrival of the me person who carried the message itself. But did John prepare the way? John did prepare the way. But why? How, 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 how can he prepare the way? He lost his head, man. <laughs> how can he prepare what? He prepared the way, but yet still he lost his head. <laughs> yeah. You see, Pascal. I'm, I'm just trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we are, we're just playing around. You, you understand? Now this is what you have to understand. He said, this, the scripture says, there's nobody that goes to war at his own expense. And once you are prepared to go to war, you must also be getting ready for injury. Mm. You cannot go to war without injury. You cannot go to war without coming back from war without blood on your, on your body, without having any mark on your skin. So once you accept the call to go to battle, mm. you must also be willing to die right why should jesus come and die if he's not willing to go through the process of death yeah. <laughs> he was willing to die so he was willing and he told his father when the father make announcement i'm looking for somebody to send down to the earth and the entire heaven became silence and he alone said i will go right but the father hid from him never told him that you're going to come and go through a lot of persecution the father always have known something without telling us the detail because he knows that if you want to tell you the entire details before you commit yourself to the assignment, chances are that you will not have anybody to go. Huh. Everybody would like to dodge and everybody would like to escape danger. 
And so the father always hide from you. Mm. So in the midst of the battle, he protects you at every day, at every point in time. But in the case of John the Baptist, it was a learning process for all of us. Mm. That once you accept the responsibility to be used by God, you must also be prepared to die right. at any point in time. Right, right, you right, must right. also be prepared to go through persecution and trouble. Mm. And you can lose your head for the sake of the kingdom. Hey, this is Niobe. Hope you're locked in and ready for that fresh revelation with me at 4 p.m. sharp. One on one with Niobe 101. Don't miss it. Tune in for our Nugget segment at 9 a.m. from Monday to Friday for compact revelation, short pitch statements with deep meaning. PBN is now on TikTok. Check us out at pbn.tv, clipped preachings with compact revelation. So that is why, so, so the term now, the kingdom suffer violence. Right. Now, let's, let's come back to that, Pastor Carl. I, I, heard, I heard so many people <laughs> using that term I feel, I, I as, as warfare in nature. Now, listen to this. When Jesus came building on the fundamental principle that John laid, the foundation that John laid, people began to flock in. They've been told for so many centuries that there's going to be a coming of the Messiah. Mm. So all the prophets prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. Right. And so people were waiting for the arrival of the Messiah mm. in order for them to receive salvation and deliverance from all the oppressive mm. rule of men that were governing them at the time. So finally, when they were told, when John finished his work and Christ now finally came as a Messiah, they realized that now what we what we were told for all the century now is happening right in front of us hmm. now christ came so everybody want to have access to christ huh. and so people were flogging in now the gathering the momentum of the gathering seems like people were in battle hmm. to take a city Right. And the preparation is that, the, the, the term here is that the, the gathering, the large gathering of the people to have access to Christ, huh. that is what appear like a battle. Right. That right. is what appear like a war, mm -hmm. but it was not war. It was the, the drive for salvation, the drive to have access to the knowledge, the drive to have access to the Messiah. So everybody was gathering at the same time. And so the gathering became like men preparing for war. Mm. And so that term, that term that was used right there, the kingdom suffered violence. Mm. Everybody want to enter. Everybody want to have access to Christ. And so people were so eager so they tend to use that word that it was suffering violence but not in a negative violence to for war but it was a violent way of entering into the kingdom of christ that he came with mm. to receive knowledge he said again also he said again, but take it by force by force yeah. because salvation that has come they realize that they've been denied of salvation for a long time They've been denied access to the truth for a long time. Mm -hmm. the, the rulers who rule over them in the past subject them under all kinds of scrutiny and pain. And therefore, when they hear that crisis in town and the man is teaching the 
kingdom principles to give everybody equal chance to live a peaceful life and to have knowledge of the kingdom that he brought so everybody was flogging in to hear the message of salvation <laughs> the flogging in of the message of salvation amen, amen. that is what appear like a battle and mm. everybody want to have that salvation by force Everybody want to have access to the knowledge of Christ, the kingdom principle that he came with by force. So people were gathering to receive the message of salvation that he came with. Mm -hmm. That is what appeared like a war, but it was not war. It was a positive war to receive information, to transform their mentality mm -hmm. and the life that they ought to live for the kingdom of God. So, so, so this, 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 uh, this violence by force. Does, does the principle maintain a balance of leadership or is it open to to just the human race because a lot of people a lot of in fact a lot, a lot of women women right want to rise up now <laughs> and right. they are going for it by force but they don't understand they have there's an order of god so does god kingdom have order because the bible says god is a god of order if one want to take it, take, it, take it by force, can they violate God's order? No. <laughs> now, God's, God's rule, God's orders cannot be violated. If you violate God's rule and God's order and God's authority, mm. there is a consequences. <laughs> there is an action. There is a penalty. Now, you cannot violate the law of your state that you live in why do you think you can violate the laws of God and go without punishment right, right, right. now Are you excited? Well, I'm excited. Get ready as I come to you with Boys to Men every day at 11 a.m. on Podium Broadcasting Network. With me, your host, Alex George. PBN is now on TikTok. Check us out at pbn.tv. Clipped preachings with compact revelation. Coming to you at 1 p.m. daily, the PBN Midday Segment. Women who are trying today to take leadership position as far as the, the church is concerned to be pastors and priests over God's kingdom, mm. I think they lack the knowledge of the fundamental principles of the kingdom of God. Right. Now, why should 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we go back there. It is one of the main scriptures that explains the, the position. Main, the it, main, I think it's the, I think it's the only, it, there is no scripture in the Bible that defines the order of God. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, but, but that in that first Corinthians chapter 11, Paul took his time to explain the hierarchy of God and the orders that God have set in place to govern the kingdom of God. Hmm. And now, he started by saying that the head of Christ yeah. is God. Right. And that you can't question that you, one. You, you, you can't can, no, can no, no, challenge no, no, no. that. Yeah, yeah. You can negotiate that. Yeah. You can subject it into analysis by any intellectual analysis. Yeah. Now, number two, he said the head of Christ, the head of Christ is God, and the head of the, man. the head of God, the let me let me let me go over it again this is very crucial for people to understand the head of christ is god. the head of christ is god and the head of the man of the man christ. is christ mm. now if that is the fundamental principle that was said by the scripture that paul explained to us then i don't see anywhere when a woman has to be contending to take a leadership position by laying hands on men by 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 
trying to rule over men any woman who try to rule over a man whether the man is a security man is a gate man is a is a is a nobody in the society <laughs> a man has been in bill authority that god has given to him to govern and to in rule. build in, in bill ability so you know even though that man don't we have that it is there absolutely but that's why violence comes we have to activate that correct and and pastor Carl, that brings me to another thing that you're just saying to activate that violence it is not natural violence it is men like you men like me and the genuine men of god must begin to teach for men to understand who they are <laughs> the acquisition of the knowledge is what men have to run that's for. a war by self that is a war <laughs> that the scripture is talking about now pastor Carl, the question arises again here sir can you take your child to school for acquisition of knowledge without paying money now, you cannot take your child to school to acquire information that is going to transform his life without paying money. <laughs> now, the same way in the kingdom, you cannot, my, just, my, 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 you my. cannot just acquire the knowledge of God by sitting down passively. You need to be aggressive. You need to rise. You need to rise to say, I need to get this information my, my, to, my, my, to my. turn on my inner light, which has gone off so that I can become that light, that, that authority, that governing authority that God has built in me, which I don't know. I need to switch on the light. The light have to switch on. And what is going to switch on the light? The knowledge from the man of God, like yeah. you, teaching all the time, letting the man know that, listen, you were ignorant in the past by allowing women, girlfriend, women to rule over you. It is about time for you to understand who you are before God through the acquisition of the <laughs> principles of the knowledge of God's word. My, my, my. Hey, I, man, I tell you, this man is just passing by, you know. And I just tell you that. He did not know. We didn't discuss this. He just is the Holy Spirit. If you ever, if you never hear the Holy Spirit speak to a man, you are hearing that now on the Hallelujah. program broadcasting networks. And what he's saying there is authentic. It is authorized and is also registered in God's word. Correct. The man called this by the head of every man is Christ. It's the only order. Get, get and go a little deeper. And so, okay. And after man, right? Who man head? Who is the head of the man? Yeah. Is Christ. Right. Christ becomes the head of the man. Right. Now, yesterday at the meeting that you and I had together in that church, now we we were trying to explain <laughs> to the people <laughs> that the church was not born out of Jesus. Right. The church was born out of Christ. Of Christ. Mm. And that is why. In the New Testament, where the church is clearly defined, we are not told in any part of the New Testament that the church is called the body of Jesus. Mm. The church has never been called the body of Jesus. Right. The church has always been referred to as the body of Christ. Christ. Mm. And who is Christ? The anointed one. Mm. Number two, who is Christ? The heavenly knowledge that came as the light to shine in the darkness mm. now the word knowledge simply the word the word darkness means ignorant mm. Mm. when the bible referred to in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and in genesis and when he talks about in genesis chapter one darkness covered the entire face of the deep that is not referring to 7 p.m 6 p.m in the evening mm. that is referring to ignorant my god good one you know gideon the, we are talking here now on um, understanding kingdom principles. Correct. Because this, this is a time for us where God's kingdom need to take over. Correct. And the church needs to step aside. The church has been in the front line too long doing nothing. And trying 
the best to, to feed the flesh and not trying the best to feed the, the soul. So we are trying to understand where shall we go from here. Get it? No. We had to come back to our part too because, you know, <laughs> the good stuff. Hey, uh, we, had, we had to go. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back right now, maybe uh, next time. But right now, we had to leave. And you're listening to the Podium but Carter Network. And I'm the host, Carl Mead. And look up for part two. We are talking here, understanding Kingdom. But we'll see you next time with uh, my host, Gideon. Much love, much love, much love. God bless. <laughs> Thank you for viewing Ever Increasing Voice Ministries. If you would like a copy of the sermon you have just seen, call us at 1-866-633-2336 or email us at pbntrinidad at gmail.com. Praise God again. Welcome again to Podium for Carter Network. I'm your host, Carl Mead, and today we are coming live into your, on your home, on your cell phone, your iPad, wherever you are around the world. I'm talking to you right now, and this is the talking here about pillars of truth. It's a table where truth comes from. And I thank God for tonight. I have a, a guest that's passing <coughs> by from Ghana, and he came yesterday, just passed by from anniversary, and he's just here to share with us. And you know, uh, we are now focusing on this month on God's kingdom. Because God's kingdom is what Christ brought for us. He did not brought the church. He brought God's kingdom to us. But the church is man-made and God's God kingdom is God-made. So again, stay in the dial. Don't turn around. Don't move around because some good stuff is coming away. Amen? I believe that God will give you some good insight into reality on tonight. I have a good friend of me, a good friend of mine. Gideon Akutu from Ghana. Gideon, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, how Come are you? Uh, how, how will you enjoy Trinidad so far? Uh, as usual, how Trinidad has always been a very wonderful place. For you? Yeah, for me. And I believe not only for me, but I believe all the visitors that come to this, this country yeah. really enjoy this place. Right, right, right. Well, you know, tonight we we having a, a good time. We was in a church yesterday, man. <laughs> ah, man, that was a good service, man. We thank God. You, know, you brought some good revelation for the church. Right. And I believe this is the kind of message the church wants. True. And I believe any pastor who have a man like you around should open their doors. Because some things you see in that church yesterday, last time I was here, yeah. or last night, the pastor couldn't say it. So sometimes men of God need to open the doors for fresh flame and fresh fire. Right. You know, I thank God. But you know, I, I will be sharing here this month, in the month of July, on uh, God's kingdom. How do you look at God's kingdom? What do you, what, what, how do you see the church and God's kingdom? Well, praise God to all the listeners and the viewers all across the globe. Mm -hmm. And everywhere you are sitting, watching and glued to the station, uh, watching myself and Carl Mead talking mm -hmm. about the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. the relationship between the church and the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Number one, what I would like to say for all the listeners is that understanding of the kingdom mm. is very important in order for those living in the kingdom to be effective. Yeah. You have to understand the kingdom you belong to. Right. That every kingdom has rules, right. has principles, have set of rules that governs the kingdom. Right. So if you don't understand the, the rules of the kingdom, you cannot effectively enjoy the kingdom. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> go on, man, go on. Yeah, and, and therefore, the kingdom of God, as you quoted in John, in Matthew chapter 12, 11, mm. verse number 12, 12 mm. when it says that since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Right. And the violent take it by force. What that, what that mean to you? When, because a lot of preachers take that script there. Yeah. And you know, and they, they make it look like, you know, like it's a kind of war going on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get it right, you know. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. On, yeah. On, I, on I would like to say something here, Carl. You know, like I, like I say from my, my opening statement, understanding of everything 
is very crucial in mm -hmm. order for you to be effective in that, either in the kingdom or in the business or in marriage or in relationship or mm -hmm. any career. Yeah. Understanding of the fundamental principles of the foundation that govern that institution yeah. is very important. <laughs> now, what do we have to understand about this scripture? Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. It has nothing to do with warfare. Right. Right. It, is, it is not about warfare. Mm. Like myself, I have heard many people talking about many pastors, bishop, apostle, prophet, talking about taking taking things by force by that scripture. It has nothing to do with that. This is what it has to do with from the perspective of understanding is that John the Baptist mm. was sent as a man to prepare the way for the arrival of Christ. The sent one. The sent one. <laughs> like, like, like you always, you know, say, you know. <laughs> the sent one, the sent one. The sent one. Now, the sent one, John the Baptist, was sent to prepare the mm. way for the arrival of Christ. Right. And John make it for us to understand that he is not himself, not a Christ, mm. but he was just sent to prepare the way for the arrival of the main person. Mm. Now, Jesus also, when he arrived, already started building on the work that John the Baptist came to do right. about the preparation of the way for his arrival. Right. John preached the baptism of repentance. And as a result of the people from Judah, you know, the, all the neighboring system, they all came and followed John the Baptist. And John baptized a lot of people and a lot of people were following John the Baptist. Right. And therefore, when Christ came, mm. Christ began to Build on what John the Baptist has already started. Well, well, why you, well, why you, why are you thinking that, that John the Baptist come? Because I mean, Christ could have come without without being a foreigner, right? But why did why why did God send John before? But I mean, Christ, <coughs> is, Christ is God, right? Yeah, he's oh, God then, So why why does not come prepare way for for God? Why did you see? Now, the, the, now, now we have to come back to this understanding. The entering way of any spirit from heaven to earth realm yeah. is through the womb of a woman. Right. Now, there is no spirit being that will be legal to operate on earth without coming through the womb of a woman. Huh. Now, God himself realized that that is the legal entering point to the planet earth. That any other spirit that comes without coming through the womb of a woman to wrap around with flesh you are illegal operating on earth right. so god himself through jesus christ have to also subject himself through the coming through the womb of a woman so that we can have a flesh around god to wrap him around my, 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 my. so that he can also come through the same channel yeah. everybody's coming through uh, okay so that he become legal person operating on earth now, if we do understand that, then you can understand the reason why John the Baptist have to be sent to prepare the way for Christ. Hmm. Just as any leader, any prince, any governor, any president moving into another country, hmm. they don't go just like that by getting up to go. Hmm. They have to send somebody ahead, the four runners right. ahead of them yeah, prepare to the prepare way. the way right. for the arrival of the president or the king or hmm. the queen. Hmm. 
so that everybody will be ready to receive what is coming. So somebody always have to prepare the way for the arrival of the me person who carried the message itself. But did John prepare the way? John did prepare the way. Oh, why? How, how, how can you prepare the way? He lost his head, man. <laughs> how can you prepare what? You prepare the way, but yes, still he lost his head. <laughs> yeah. You see, Pascal. I'm, I'm just trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we are, we're just playing around. You, you understand? <laughs> now, this is what you have to understand. He said, this, the scripture says, there's nobody that goes to war at his own expense. And once you are prepared to go to war, you must also be getting ready for injury. Mm. You cannot go to war without injury. You cannot go to war without coming back from war without blood on your, on your body, without having any mark on your skin. So once you accept the call to go to battle, mm. you must also be willing to die right why should jesus come and die if he's not willing to go through the process of death yeah. <laughs> he was willing to die so he was willing and he told his father when the father make announcement i'm looking for somebody to send down to the earth and the entire heaven became silence and he alone said i will go right but the father hid from him never told him that you're going to come and go through a lot of persecution the father always have known something without telling us the detail because he knows that if you want to tell you the entire details before you commit yourself to the assignment, chances are that you will not have anybody to go. Huh. Everybody will like to dodge and everybody will like to escape danger. And so the father always hide from you. Hmm. So in the midst of the battle, he protect you at every day, at every point in time. But in the case of John the Baptist, it was a learning process for all of us. Hmm. That once you accept the responsibility to be used by God, you must also be prepared to die right. at any point in time. Right, right, you right, must right. also be prepared to go through persecution and trouble. Hmm. And you can lose your head for the sake of the kingdom. Hey, this is Niobe. Hope you're locked in and ready for that fresh revelation with me at 4 p.m. sharp. One on one with Niobe 101. Don't miss it. Tune in for our Nugget segment at 9 a.m. from Monday to Friday for compact revelation, short pitch statements with deep meaning. PBN is now on TikTok. Check us out at pbn.tv, clipped preachings with compact revelation. So that is why, so, so the term now, the kingdom suffer violence. Right. Now, let's, let's come back to that, Pastor Carl. I, I, heard, I heard so many people <laughs> using that term I do. I do. As, as warfare in nature. Now, listen to this. When Jesus came building on the fundamental principle that John laid, the foundation that John laid, people began to flock in. They've been told for so many centuries that there's going to be a coming of the Messiah. Mm. So all the prophets prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. Right. And so people were waiting for the arrival of the Messiah mm. in order for them to receive salvation and deliverance from all the oppressive mm. rule of men that were governing them at the time. So finally, when they were told, when John finished his work and Christ now finally came as a Messiah, they realize that now what we what we were told for all the century now is happening right in front of us hmm. now christ came so everybody want to have access to christ huh. 
and so people were flogging in now the gathering the momentum of the gathering seems like people were in battle mm. to take a city right and the preparation is that the, the, the term here is that the the gathering the large gathering of the people to have access to christ huh. that is what appear like a battle right that right. is what appear like a war mm. but it was not war it was the the drive for salvation the drive to have access to the knowledge the drive to have access to the messiah so everybody were gathering at the same time and so the gathering became like men preparing for war mm. and so that term that term that was used right there the kingdom suffered violence mm. everybody want to enter everybody want to have access to christ and so people were so eager so they tend to use that word that it was suffering violence but not in a negative violence to for war but it was a violent way of entering into the kingdom of christ that he came with mm. to receive knowledge we said again also said again, but take it by force by force yeah. because salvation that has come they realize that they've been denied of salvation for a long time they've been denied access to the truth for a long time mm. the the rulers who rule over them in the past subject them under all kinds of scrutiny and pain and therefore when they heard that christ is in town and the man is teaching the kingdom principles to give everybody equal chance to live a peaceful life and to have knowledge of the kingdom that he brought so everybody was flogging in to hear the message of salvation